Welcome back to Midcap Radar. Uh, you know, in the last hour, you've seen some stocks spiking. One of them is Tata Chemicals. Uh, uh, certain uh, sell-side analysts uh, have highlighted the fact that there has been a bit of a recovery as far as soda ash prices are concerned. And Tata Chemicals today is up over two and a half percent, up over two percent in the session. Now trading near the day's highest point. But as promised, let's now move on. Inox Mint's EPC project subsidiary Resco Global has raised 350 crore rupees from equity investors. The funds are to be utilized to scale up the business. To discuss this and more, we have Devan Jain, the ED at Inox GFL Group, who joins us now. Good afternoon, Devan. Thank you so much for joining us. First up, you know, talk to us about the exact quantum of funds. You said you've uh, sold a single-digit stake for 350 crore. So, what's the exact quantum? What is the implied valuation for this particular business? And what is the order book at this particular Resco Global business that you have, which is the EPC arm? Hi, good afternoon. A lot of questions. I'll try and answer all of them. Uh, uh, so Resco is amongst the top two uh, wind EPC providers in the country. What we've done uh, and what we've announced recently is we are raising uh, 350 crores uh, into this entity, which will primarily be used for ramping up execution and a lot of other new revenue, revenue streams which we're getting into. For example, we're moving into cranes, we're moving into hybridization of transmission assets. We're looking at a lot of other value-added products which would add at least 150 crores of incremental profitability uh, in the coming financial year. And then it scales up as uh, INOX wins uh, capacities and volumes keep growing. What we wanted to achieve was we basically wanted to make each and every arm of Inox Wind, be it Inox Green, which is the o &M vertical, or now Resto Global, which is an EPC arm, very, very strong financially, so that they could grow and capitalize on the superlative uh, multi-decade growth opportunities which we're seeing on the wind side. And I think this uh, raise just makes us very, very strong on the Resco balance sheet as well. Of course, Inox Wind is a net cash company now. Inox Green is net cash, very strong. Uh, Resco becomes very, very large. And, uh, uh, you know, you mentioned to me uh, the valuation. So what we've done is we've raised money at a post-merger, post-money valuation of about 5,500 crores. So obviously that, that not only unlocks more value, uh, it also enables investors to come in at this early stage. So we've got a lot of uh, uh, very, very uh, marquee, large HNIs, uh, family offices, who've come in, given that uh, this is an unlisted space at this point in time, so institutions could not come in. Uh, we've diluted roughly about 7% odd uh, for this raise. So that's a little bit about this transaction. Okay. All right. Uh, can you just give us a sense in terms of what the current EPC order book is at Resco? And, uh, you know, does it also provide third-party EPC services? So uh, the current order book at the Inox wind level is close to about three gigawatts. And uh, uh, approximately 60% of those orders are turnkey orders, which means uh, all the project uh, implementation scope comes into RESCO. Now that would be worth approximately thumb rule 1.5 crores a megawatt. So uh, in terms of uh, math, the order book at RESCO should be close to, uh, uh, close to about 3,000 crores. Uh, in terms of value over the next two years. And, uh, you know, I think as we're moving forward, which you've said, I think we're seeing huge traction and massive in, uh, uh, incremental orders coming in. I think at this point in time, we're negotiating for at least seven, eight large deals. I think a lot of them are turnkey as well. So a lot of that will flow into uh, RESCO as we keep moving forward. Uh, Devansh understood that. Uh, Devansh, now you have two entities which are actually in the service vertical. The first one is Resco Global, you know, which is your EPC arm, and the other one is Inox Green Energy, which is your o &M arm. Uh, we understand that there would be a significant overlap in terms of the businesses and even in the customer profile. So at some point of time in the future, would you look at merging these operations? And secondly, you said that you're in talks, you know, to go ahead and close quite a few deals or quite a few order wins. Uh, could you give us a sense of uh, the gigawatt uh, or the megawatts that could come into the order book? Look, uh, I think uh, first and foremost, yes, these are the two arms of Inox Wind. One is the o &M arm called Inox Green, and obviously Resco is the EPC arm. So many of the customers, I mean, virtually all the customers are going to be common, but they are a completely different profile. Inox Green is an annuity business, very high margin, high growth, uh, throwing up cash, sticky business. 
EPC is a massive growth, but it's not an annuity business. Of course, it's growing and scaling up massively because Inox Wind itself is, is scaling up massively. So we, we've announced 800 megawatts for this year, 1,200 for next year, with the caveat that we're looking at a substantial raise to the guidance which we've given out. I won't spell out those numbers at this point in time, but yes, as we move forward, our order book itself will, 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 will throw up enough indication as to where we are headed. I won't spell out in terms of actual megawatts, but I think given the fact that we're sitting on a three gigawatt order book today, I think at this point in time, we would be negotiating for, uh, or, you know, I'm not saying all of them will get concluded, but we're probably talking to almost uh, 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 seven or eight very large customers. All of them are to the magnitude of 200 to 300 megawatts each. So, I mean, at this point in time, we would be talking, negotiating for almost a gigawatt and a half of uh, orders. Uh, again, not all of them would culminate, but I think there's very, very large traction in the market. Okay, there's large traction in the market. You're caveating yourself by saying that one gigawatt, but not a lot might, uh, you know, culminate. But what do you think? Like, what what would the ballpark figure be? What would your exit run rate be for FI25 when it comes to the order book? And, uh, you know, you, you said it's an, it's an active market. Based on that, what are you anticipating? Look, I think I'll, 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 I'll give a more qualitative answer. So what we've said is we're gearing ourselves to be a two gigawatt player in the Indian market. And uh, I think that should happen much uh, earlier than what the market believes us to be able to do it. Uh, we have announced about 1,200 megawatts for next year. Again, with the caveat that there could be a significant upgrade to that. Having said that, I think in the following financial year, if we are going to gun for say two gigs or somewhere around that, uh, and, and you have typically a 24 months or at best 30 month order book, I would expect, um, uh, you know, you could do the math yourself. I think we would have a significant increase to our current order book over the course of the next couple of months. Uh, Devansh, you know, uh, while you spoke about, uh, you know, the EPC arm of the business, even at the parent level, uh, there has been a restructuring that you've undertaken. I believe you're still waiting for the final approvals to come in. So when will Inox Wind Energy restructuring get completed? We understand that most of the arms now are debt-free. Uh, so come Q3, how will the balance sheet look at as far as Inox Wind is concerned? And also, you did say last time when you came on our channel that you expect a significant upside to FY26 guidance. Uh, between then and now, do you have any further visibility in terms of uh, ordering activity over there and the top line guidance? So, a couple of things here. First and foremost, with respect to IWEL, it's basically a merger. It's the holding company of Inox Wind, which is merging into Inox Wind. So, it's, it's, it, it just simplifies the structure and uh, rewards the minority shareholders uh, of IWEL who were at the holding company level. Uh, we have all the approvals in place, be it uh, uh, creditors, talk exchanges, et cetera, et cetera. I believe the final NCLT hearing is uh, on uh, in the next couple of days. Once that happens, I think over the next two to three months, this transaction should get culminated, which just simplifies the structure, number one. Uh, number two, with respect to upping guidance, yes, we, we have mentioned there is a significant upside to our publicly stated guidances for FI26, and uh, to some extent, we're up, we're, 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 we're sharing the data with, with respect to the fact that by venturing into our own cranes and hybridization, we'll add an incremental at least 150 crores to the bottom line. So our margins to that extent will go up, our profitability to that extent will grow up. Uh, there will be incremental uh, profitability, I don't want to spell out those numbers yet, but that's something which we'll talk as we move along the way. That's given, uh, you know, some of the reasons why that's happening is because royalties come to an end next year. We have a better product mix, larger 3 megawatt 4x turbines coming in next year. We also have, with such scale, negotiating power in terms of, of squeezing out more from supply chain. So I think there is a, you know, very, very significant uh, upside to numbers out there. But at this point in time, we are already upping numbers by an incremental 150 crores to what we've guided publicly. Okay, all right. Uh, we're going to leave it on that note. Thanks very much for joining in and speaking with us. Uh, so that is Inox Wind. That stock is up around half odd percent at this point in time. Well, for the markets, uh, it is the Nifty which has slipped back into the red. So just about consolidating at this point. A lot of specific stocks are doing well. So we'll touch base on that after a short break. Stay tuned.